Ero. When you don't have these simple human basics, the law you get mm. helps you to specialize in grabbing people's land titles. Exactly. SF Channel will take a solo work of it. It's not going to be a good thing. It's not going to be a good thing. It's not going to be a good thing. Mugenda kuhu nyewa chituli mbalala. Na ina bagamba, tuleteze nsonga government ni media houses. Zitagala kuhugira ko. I'm called Kamuni Inde John. And uh, I'm a student at the Law Development Center. Stay in Mbalala. As per now, but uh, I hail from Tungamo district. In Rusheni constituency. Hey. Yes. Uh, he was born in 1993. Uh, uh, on 20 on 30th December, and uh, I was born of uh, of Karongo George, that mm. is my father, mm. and my mother is uh, Tivenderana Jacinta. Mm. Oh, okay. In Wentobo, Wentobo village, actually. Mm. Yes. Which means we are born people in the village. Yes. That is good. Nice to meet you, John, at SF Channel Thank you. Yeah. The 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 unique thing with our channel is. We always want to share those issues other people have ignored. Yes, yes. We don't mind about whether someone is a big person. For us, we look for content from people that media has ignored. Yes. Yes. Um, I grew up in the village, mm. like I already told you. Mm. And um, my parents and we are all farmers majorly. If I'm to tell you, my my mother generally did not go to school. Mm. Uh, Actually, I can say I was born in that uh, poor background from an illiterate family. Mm. Uh, but um, fortunately, with the help of my auntie called uh, Sister Bonnie, Conceal Ngabirano, mm. I was able to go to school. And uh, my primary, I did primary school from uh, Good Time Nasale and primary school. Mm. Then, um, for secondary, uh, fortunately, after doing well at in, primary, yes, at mm. primary, uh, my aunt, Sister Bonnie, uh, took me to St. Joseph's Nagarama. Nagarama, yes. Now you are crossing from the village, yes, to another area of the country, yes. Okay. I was uh, very mm. excited from Tongamo to mm. Mekono. Oh, yeah, yes. Mm. Uh, however, I went uh, in Nagarama, I spent there one year for senior one, senior one. Mm. Uh, the tuition I could not manage the tuition mm. and uh, sorry, sorry. I, I, I finally my aunt brought me to another school under the sponsorship of Meeting Point International. Mm. It's an organization? Yes, it is an organization okay. with offices in Chitintari, mm. uh, Kampara. So it is then that where I commenced my senior two from uh, up to senior six. The situation back then was not easy. Mm. Uh, I couldn't even believe that uh, even one day would appear before the, the camera <laughs> like this. Uh, John Kamurinde in Mbarara is a, he has a very interesting story. John, you want to know, yes, what is special about the education you had in the primary? The education, I would say that the education mm. I had in the primary was uh, focused on uh, passing exams. We are keen to pass exams. But there was nothing much that I, I, I can still remember mm. in uh, my primary education. What I can say is that I learned how to read and write, mm. and uh, especially at a good time in nursery mm. and primary school, mm. I learned some bit of English. Uh, that's when I learned how to speak English. Mm. I think for the boys, I was the best in the whole sub county. Oh, yes. 2008. 2008. Yes. That's when you went for PROE. Yes. That's good. What about secondary? Secondary is what shaped mm. my ideology, as I can say, or my perception mm. of education and the matters regarding governing slow and so on. Mm. First, I went to St. Joseph, Joseph's Nagarama. Mm. Senior uh, one. Yes, senior mm. one. Yes, they were focused on a formalist education, but uh, also we had an extra subject called the moral training. Apart from merely teaching formal education and passing exam, mm. they used also to teach us about life values. Mm. That's what began 
shaping my life mm. on perception mm. of education. Mm. After then, I went to to Luigi Jusani High School, mm. and uh, I say Luigi Jusani High School mm. completed uh, my definition mm. or my hypothesis mm. um, of education and politics. Okay. One, mm. because. Uh, at Luigi Juzani High School, mm. I came to understand the meaning of education. Mm. Education is not about acquisition of skills or passing exams, but it's about um, understanding, self-discovery. Mm. It's beyond the academics, and it's beyond academics, mm. as we have said. I joined the university mm. in. Uh, in 2015, mm. that is uh, Kampala International University. KIU. Okay, yes. Is it from Barara or the, the main branch, Kansan? Many branch in Kansan. Oh, That's yeah. Where the school is yes. <laughs> Which year was that? That is 2015. That is 2015. Oh, uh, that's August good. Okay. 24th. Hey. Uh, we applied mm. and um, submitted in my documents, and I was admitted in the mm. law school. Mm. And we commenced the studies mm. and uh, we wanted to know how the university life is. Uh, is there any difference between an educated person mm. and the, the persons that stay deep in the villages? Mm. What is the difference? Mm. What difference does education bring in someone's life? Mm. Yes. yes what is special about your course? First of all, I didn't know much about law. I wanted to get something that gives meaning to life, mm. to society. And law, uh, I found partly that fulfillment in law, but the way law is taught and other course units are taught, mm. or other um, courses are taught, it goes back to the other problem I had in, uh, in the primary. Mm. Do not, they are also meant to meet uh, market demands, but not to, to address make you... the integral needs of humanity. And uh, that's the problem we find in practice as lawyers. Mm. And uh, the same problems clients find with lawyers. In the sense that, whereas you can study law, uh, get your first class, have masters, have what and so on, when you don't have uh, these simple human basics, of mm. love, justice, happiness, and so on, mm. you find you specialize, the law you get mm. helps you to specialize in grabbing people's land titles. Exactly. And uh, mm. this is not addressed at school. You are taught only skills, no law, speak English, uh, read the statutes, read the cases. Uh, but there is something beyond that. And that's where I began from my ideology at Luigi Juzan High School, I applied it in the law, and then together with different interactions with lecturers mm. and uh, students, I, I, I got the right hypothesis of, of education mm. and life. How come that you has not even finished education for law? Yes. You can easily spot this. When so many lawyers have passed the same system, what is wrong with you apart from other lawyers? Now, mm. we normally have arguments at the university with mm. students and lecturers. What is the purpose of education? Is it to get knowledge? Is it to, is it to pass exams? Is it to meet the market demands or just to survive? Now, most students perceive education as a way in which, uh, as a channel, of sustaining their life, mm. like economically. Mm. But uh, education is broad, it will go back to the same point. And that's why uh, in, my, in, in my theories and my book, I say that uh, education is much more beyond acquisition of skills. But the government, the government, uh, the teachers and the students are, the, are, are captives of this, mm. of this slavery, yes. ideological slavery. Okay. The ideological slavery that is in the education. That's why the, a graduate that leaves the university cannot, um, has nothing beyond 
the, the, the skills acquired. Presenting yes papers. Yes. Has nothing beyond the skills acquired the law, uh, regurgitating the law acquired in school. There is no speciality he gives uh, to society. You are a lawyer, you graduate from Erodis, mm -hmm. Erodis Development Center or any law school. Mm. But you go in the village and you find you are becoming a problem of society. The education system has tried to bring in uh, courses like professional conduct. Mm. But those ones don't address the cores of humanity. They are like rules. But a student or a pupil should be taught from day one that education is a journey to self-realization, to self-discovery as a human being. Mm. Because uh, mm. subsequently, it produces synthetic graduates, it produces poor leaders that will cause mm. uh, problems in governance mm. and so on. Yes. Now, John, yes. for our leaders, everyone complains. Yes. The MOPs, the ROC5 chairpersons, even the presidents. Yes. People complain as if these leaders came from some other country to be our leaders. Yes. But I and SF channel, we believe that these leaders have been modeled by our own society. Yes. Which means it might not be the system, but even the society so far has gone astray with the importance of education. Yes. Because there are so many parents who believe that when it takes a student to a school where they pass so highly, it is better than taking that child to a school where they work harder. Yes. What do you say about that? One, I would say, I, I, I would say that um, the, the MPs are a creature, the leaders are a creature of our own society. Mm. They are not different from the prevailing conditions in a society. And I would say that first of all, they are a product of the, of of the rotten mm. education system. Mm. Why? Because the leader you grow, or the educators themselves that groom these students, that groom the leadership, are subjects of, uh, of a poor education system. They, what do they give? Do they give um, special values of humanity? Do they give basic needs of humanity in, to this student? Or they give material skill? They only give a skill, but there is something beyond the skill. Society is not sustained by skill, by knowing the law only. Mm. It is sustained by values such as honesty, such as um, justice, mm. such as happiness, such as love. Integrity. These, yes, integrity. Mm. <clears throat> These are basic needs that sustain a student beyond the skill. Because if a student gets out of the education system with only skill, how will he be able to withstand forces of corruption and bad governance? Now, that's why I'm telling you that the education system needs to incorporate, needs to educate man as an integral being. Otherwise, we become slaves of technical skills and the technical skills cannot sustain society. Mm. Have you, have you met a lecturer in your law school yes. who is different or who, is, who thinks differently? Very many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say one lecturer that uh, still that struck me mm. and still strikes me is uh, one called Joseph Chazi. Mm. He is a lecturer of civil procedure mm. at Kampala International University mm. and the Makerere University. Okay. He's a partner in Magina Advocates. Mm. What do you tell the government to do? One, mm. uh, my advice to government, mm. in my book, I write a letter to government mm. on issues such as corruption and governance. Mm. One, you should mind the way it educates its educators. Mm. One, not, uh, uh, there is professional ethics that uh, is normally given uh, to, um, teachers uh, normally undergo uh, professional ethics. Mm. But that is just dogmatic. Mm. It is in the form of dogmas, and uh, that's why once teachers go out, 
what they communicate, they, they follow rules. Mm. They follow rules because first of all, the Muslims from the start, we are not taught uh, the right way. The right way. And therefore, they communicate a dogma. They don't communicate an experience. Mm. It goes back to what I told you, that what attracts a student in education is not uh, dogmas, it's not rules, but the experience that you communicate as a teacher, the philosophy that you communicate. Okay, Therefore, that's it good. goes back mm. to society. Mm. Parents are also contributors of this slavery. Mm. Why? They have focused more on um, schools that pass students. How mm. many first grades does, does this school have? Mm. But I must say that they are also captives of the system because once your student does not pass, mm. the, 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 it is most, uh, is most <laughs> likely not hey. to be employed. Hey. But uh, I implore uh, parents to, to be focused more on the philosophy that is imparted in their children or their students. I implore the, the employers, mm. the government, to look at the philosophy that is imparted in the students. Because at the end of the day, we see employers complain that the graduates are, are not good. Mm. They have a skill, live around the issue of the same skill, same skill, but they are not trustworthy. You find a person that actually that is one of the major causes of the nepotism today and so on. Mm. You find a, a person has his enterprise, but because he does not trust people that uh, are put, the, the graduates, does not trust the graduates mm. that the education system brings, he surrounds himself with a cocoon of, uh, of relatives and so on <laughs> in order to sustain his education. Instead of hiring professional people to do that work. Yes. And now, that is a reflection. Mm. That should not only teach government, but should also teach educators and employers. What about the students? Also the students. Mm. It is a reflection of the failing philosophy in education. So government should focus on the philosophy. Because the best, education is the best of society. Mm. Education is the best of society. And the major purpose of education should be to liberate, to liberate a human being first. And then uh, other issues such as such as meeting the market demands and so on come in later. Okay. When you train a student to meet the market demands, I'm talking to government right now. Mm. When you train a student to meet market demands, this student is fatigued or he will be fatigued in the face of vices such as corruption, such as poor governance, such as poor, talk about them. There are very many. Mm. So governments look at the philosophy. And the philosophy is there. The elementary, Luigi Giuzani, one of my favorite authors, mm. calls it the elementary experience. Students, uh, the, the, the government should focus more on educating the basic structure of humanity and the basic structure of humanity constitutes of basic needs such as love justice happiness and so on and so forth okay. that should be mm. that, that that is the primary purpose of education okay for our viewers people are bright we believe you speak like a ugandan and these people will pick up this message has gone out it is me and you guys that we are the one to change the education system with people like John who have come out even seeing loopholes in their own system, the law system. Now it is me and you, whether you are an engineer, whether you are a student or lecturer or teacher or policy maker or a parent paying school fees for this learner. It is me and you. John, yes, please. send greetings to people. I send greetings to my fellow students at the Law Development Center. Mm. Uh, 
we normally have a discourse on what is education and so on mm. but I, I, they should read my book generally mm, that's the good. slavery in modern education john do you have a girlfriend uh, me according to your uh, <laughs> your ideology <laughs> Oh, you have so many fear to to, uh, to pick I out just one. Pray it's, hey. it's one of my prayers hey. that I should get one. A good one. Yes. Mm. Because um, uh, women are part of us. Okay. Yes. Uh, I send uh, greetings to one uh, mm. uh, Mariam Nasari. Mm. Uh, I send greetings to the big league. Uh, Asimu Fred. Mm. Asimu Zaivan. Mm. Um, um, I have obeyed uh, and so on and so forth. Mm. I also send greetings, my sincere greetings to, to Meeting Point International. Mm. Uh, I'm proud of them. The Wiji Design High School, I'm proud of, of that school. Mm. Kampala International University, mm. I'm very proud. Mm. I send greetings to my parents Okay. Uh, in the village. <laughs> uh, if they are watching, I hey. just... Uh, one, I, I just want to thank them for being there for me. Or yes, for being my good parents. And yes, sisters. Mm. I'm very proud of you. Um, lastly, I, I want to thank uh, uh, my my auntie, Sister Bonnie Conceal Gabirano. Mm.